Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 29 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we learn all about the interest coverage ratio. In simple terms, interest coverage ratio is a ratio that is used to determine how many times a company can pay its interest from its operating income and it's very helpful in determining how easily the company can pay interest on its outstanding debts. So, in this tutorial, we have basically four objectives. Number one, understand what interest coverage ratio is. Number two, what's its formula and calculations. Number three, we'll calculate interest coverage ratio for a Colgate case study. And number four, its interpretations and uses. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We'll be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, Please do so from the link in the description box below. And also to keep yourself updated with investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is interest coverage ratio? Interest coverage ratio is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes into the financial risk category. So in our previous video, we discussed about leverage ratio where we looked at the capital structure of the company and uh, we saw that the debt and the equity, basically the combination of the two affects the income statement. It tells us how levered the company is or not. Interest coverage ratio is more or less a similar kind of a ratio because it looks at the debt and how much amount of interest that the company has to pay, but it also looks at how much amount of operating profit that the company generates. Basically, it tries to understand whether you have sufficient operating profit to pay off your interest or not. If let's say if the company has a operating profit of let's say 100 million and its interest outgo is 25 million, then you have sufficient like you know, sufficient operating profit. But on the other side, let's say if your operating profit is just 10 million, and your interest outgo is 25 million. So obviously you do not have enough operating profit to pay off your interest. So that's a very tricky situation to be in. So interest coverage ratio basically tries to understand that part of it. To understand this uh, interest coverage ratio in a bit more detail. Let's look at the income state and then we'll get more clarity as to how it is calculated and we'll come to its formula as well. So a typical income statement starts with sales. Then we have the cost of goods sold, COGS. And from there we get gross profit, right? And from gross profit, when we deduct something called selling general and admin expense, SGN expense, we get this term called as EBITDA. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization is EBITDA. From EBITDA, we deduct depreciation and amortization. So we get this term called as EBIT, earnings before interest in taxes. Okay. Because of the debt, what we actually end up paying is the interest expense, right? So interest expense comes next. So then we get the EBT. Okay, so the term which we are interested here is right now is the interest expense. How many times, you know, do you have a bit as compared to interest expenses found using the interest coverage ratio? So let me put some numbers and then we'll get more clarity on this. Let's say this is 1000 COGS is 200. So uh, we get CO, uh, sales minus COGS is 800. Then we get SGNA expense. Let's say it's again 200. So we have this EBITDA as 800 minus 200. It's a depreciation amortization. Let's say it's 300. So we get EBIT as 600 minus 300. And interest expense, let's say it's 50. So we get the EBT earnings before taxes as 250. So interest coverage ratio formula is nothing but EBIT divided by interest expense. Okay, so what does it tell us? Let's calculate it and then we'll come to the interpretations. 300 divided by 50, right? So this will be 6 in this case. So what it tells us is that operating profit is six times of interest expense. So the company is kind of in a very comfortable position as far as the interest expense payment goes. So if let's say it was uh, one, let's change the scenario. I'll just change this moment. Let me put this COGS as 450. 
So if the COGS is 450, we get the EBIT as 50 and then the interest expense is 50. What does this mean? This essentially means that the EBIT or the operating profit is just enough to pay back its interest expense. But let's say if COGS is let's say 600, what does it mean? Now the interest expense is 50 and EBIT is minus 100. So you do not have sufficient operating profits to pay off your interest expense. What does this mean? This means that you are in a very difficult situation. You might be in a, you know, on the course of bankruptcy because if you default on your interest expense, obviously the creditors would take note of it and, uh, you know, they might, uh, they might, you know, undertake some kind of uh, proceedings against uh, the company. That's how you interpret EBIT. Many a times uh, analysts use a different formula for interest coverage ratio. So instead of EBIT, actually they prefer to take EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization divided by interest expense. And if you ask me, you know, I also think that EBITDA divided by interest expense is a better formula. Because when you look at uh, EBIT, what happens is it actually considers depreciation and amortization as an expense and after that whatever is left is the EBIT. Think of depreciation and amortization. Basically, these are non-cash expense. Thinking from a cash point of view, you know, there's no point deducting uh, the depreciation and amortization because ultimately you're trying to visualize whether the company will be able to pay its interest expense. So this is just an accounting number to look at which gives a fair representation of the income statement. However, when we look at the cash point of view, EBITDA is a much better measure to look at. Considering that as a number, for this company where we got this as minus 2, if you look at calculating the interest coverage ratio using EBITDA divided by interest expense, this will become 200 divided by 50. And uh, here in this case, you might note that the company is in a comfortable position to pay off its interest expense. This is the main uh, difference of why EBITDA should be used instead of EBIT. Either ways, you need to check with your analyst whether the company's policy is to use EBIT or EBITDA, but I would prefer to use EBITDA. So as far as the interpretation goes uh, from interest coverage uh, ratio point of view, it's important for sectors which are highly capital intensive. So think of uh, sectors like automobile or manufacturing or utilities, energy. So these are highly high capital intensive uh, sectors which require, which usually take lots of debt on its books. Studying their EBITDA to interest ratio, that is the interest coverage ratio will make lots of sense. But when there are companies which uh, uh, do not uh, expose themselves to lots of debt, like for example, service oriented companies or technology companies that doesn't have much debt in their books. For those set of companies studying their interest coverage ratio would not make sense because it will be anyways very very high because interest expense for them will be very low because of very low or non-existent debt and uh, uh, that's that's how you know you need to probably look at this and again uh, goes without saying that when you're looking at a company uh, you need to understand its interest coverage ratio vis-a-vis -vis the industry average okay so you cannot compare manufacturing companies uh, interest coverage ratio versus let's say utilities companies uh, uh, interest coverage ratio that's another thing to look at so having understood the calculations of interest coverage ratio and its interpretations let's now go to colgate's case study and calculate its uh, interest coverage ratio as uh, as i said i find ebitda upon interest expense to be a better formula for uh, doing this so i use this one in our case here is the balance sheet of colgate and i want you to scroll down to row number row number 150 okay this is where we will calculate the interest coverage ratio okay so for the interest coverage ratio what do we need we need the ebitda and we need the interest expense right if you look at the income statement of colgate you will see that explicitly EBITDA is not provided right so we have the earnings before interest in taxes that's the operating profit and then there's no item called as the depreciation and amortization right you know there is selling general and admin expense then there's cost of sales so when you read more um, through the SEC filings of Colgate you'll realize that what Colgate has done is they have included depreciation and amortization expense in cost of sales and SGN expense 
uh, from the financial statement that is the income statement you won't get the depreciation expense right but there's one place where we can still get the depreciation expense directly is the cash flow statement okay so i want you to open the cash flow statement and look at this it starts with the operating activity net income including non controlling interest and this is where you have the depreciation and amortization expense why are we hunting for this number because we want to use ebitda in the numerator okay and we have only been provided with ebit numbers so when we add the depreciation and amortization to ebit we'll get the ebitda that's that's how it will be like so for the cash flow statement we see that we only have 3 years of data so let's calculate uh, this last 3 years of interest coverage ratio here we are in, in row number 150 and uh, again we've given some rows from 139 to 141 where we can link these numbers from the respective income statement and cash flows so that the calculations become you know fairly easy you can directly do it from the different worksheets but is it's always wise to link these numbers within the sheet and then calculate ratios accordingly let's do that i'll link this ebit from the income statement ebit is for 2018 it's 3694 so linking it from there and uh, we also have the interest expense from the income statement interest expense is this much 143 145 and 164 and the depreciation and amortization expense we just saw we need to link it from the cash flow statement okay so 511 519 and 539 these are the numbers that we have now let's calculate the interest coverage ratio the interest coverage ratio in the numerator we have ebitda ebit plus your depreciation and amortization will be called as earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization okay so that's the number we are looking at divided by your interest expense that is 143 here so what do we get we get 29 times so it seems like colgate is in a very comfortable position as far as the interest expense goes okay so let's copy this for the remaining 2 years and see how much that is 28 and 27 so i would you know interpret that colgate is in a very comfortable position and they have they are generating sufficient amount of uh, ebitda to pay off its interest expense how does colgate's uh, interest coverage ratio of 27 compared to its uh, peer we have been using procter and gamble as its peer group if you look at procter and gamble's interest coverage ratio it's around 52 if you look at both of them actually both of them are in a very comfortable position and uh, they are doing exceptionally well as far as their interest coverage ratio I hope now you understood what is interest coverage ratio how do you calculate it and its interpretations I hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section also we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly so if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet Please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.